I'm here with a spoken word poet. She's inspiring, she's empowering, she's inspirational. You probably have seen her on Kim Kardashian's latest uh, Skims campaign, Watch Out World. <laughs> you and all your glory, baby. Please welcome Ariel Astoria! Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I always go like an octave up when I say people's I names. They're like, what was that? It's Ariel Astoria. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I told you this offset, but like, yeah. you are literally, I was crying reading your Instagram last, I'm not kidding. The one I'm talking about specifically was your latest post, I think. Well, the one, the lyrics from the song that you like yeah. said, that was you yeah. talking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you. It just hit home. Like, will you, Thank just you. tell me like what, why that hit home for you and why yeah. you wanted to share that specifically. Um, I literally, I was on... Uh, my friend Ruthie's Instagram. She had posted the lyrics to it, and I was like, oh, I love a good song. And pretty much everything she tells me about, I'll, I feel super emotionally connected to. Yeah. And so I was like already up, I was writing, I was just like kind of like, um, just like meditating and processing, and um, I played the song, and I was like, huh, just like that instant, just like soul, just yeah. cave. Yeah. And so I literally sat there for an hour, and I just played it like on repeat and I usually I say spilling instead of writing mm -hmm. um and if something elicits that like spilling response then I let it happen essentially and so I'm playing the song and I instantly like pulled up my notes and I just started just like writing whatever lines or whatever phrases that came to mind and then it switched to what I posted last night and I was like, what is this like process of unfolding yeah. look like? And for me, like a lot of changes happened in the past like five days. And so navigating through um, the beauty of change and embracing the beauty of change, but then also still setting in this space of like where you've come from and what you've known um, and, and allowing that unfolding. And so the whole time the song played, I just kept imagining like a flower mm -hmm. and that like beautiful slow-mo motion where it just like unravels yeah. um and faces the sun and so that's like what I first started writing was just this idea of blooming also relating to this idea of unfolding and the pain that is also sometimes in oh like sheer discomfort yeah. sheer pain like just this like emotional uprooting of things which is so painful mm -hmm. um growth is painful but it also elicits such a beautiful response in things yeah so. No, I mean, well, I know you've been through a lot of changes because you just got engaged. I did. Oh, did. Oh my god. I'm a pretty yeah, one. Show that here. This is your close up. We'll here just, we go. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, how did you and John meet? We met via Instagram. Oh my actually. gosh, tell us the story. Yeah. So his sister um, had been following me anyway okay. um, and heard me on a podcast where I was like talking about singleness, which yeah. is super funny. And so she heard the podcast, started following me, and then like started going through my poems and stuff like that and sent him one of my poems. And he was like, who is this? Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna date her. And she was like, LOL, good luck with that. Like, she's like, insta yeah. or whatever. And I was like, that was not the thing, but um, she was pretty much like, good luck. And so he started following me. Guys are not my demographic. So yeah. I was instantly like, who? who is this, you know? <laughs> and he's like watching my stories and all this stuff. I just kind of like let it happen. And you're like, is he, and then it, did it get to a point where you're like, is he watching my, like, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You like can swipe up and you're like, there he is at yeah. the top. So I was like, hmm. So I let that happen for like two months. And then he commented on one of my posts and I was like, I'm just going to message him. I'm just going to do it. So I DM'd him and I said, hey, I host an open mic, which that year was like my pickup line. I'm like, hey, I host an open mic. You should like come or whatever. Um, and so I said I'm that to him. So in all, I'm proud of you. Like you slid in. Never. I've never done anything like that before and I was like host an open mic you should come and perform I see you do poetry because he had like poet in his bio oh mm -hmm. okay. so there was like a similar connection yeah. and the post he had commented on was a post about writing and so he I was like oh what tools do you use and I was like oh I use those too whatever so he was like oh, I don't perform but I am looking to find like more opportunities to be you know involved and included yeah. and so that's kind of like where it took off is from a little slit in the DMs. Um, but then we like noticed as we started dating all the different ways we've like crossed paths, but like haven't met, which Isn't was so, so cool. Isn't that so cool how God, like you, I know you're a believer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so well, I know you, <laughs> I went deep in stalking your Instagram. Okay. She, great, great, great. She loved Jesus. So, so do I. Here we are. But I do, it's so cool how, I mean, 
it's like God is going to bring that together at the perfect yeah. timing. But then looking back to like, he was always orchestrating all always. these events to happen. Yeah. You didn't know that. Literally like my freshman year, he was like, oh yeah, I was like on like Azusa's, I went to Azusa Pacific and he was okay. like, I was on Azusa Pacific's campus all the time. And I was like, no, you weren't. <laughs> I've never seen you before in my life. And that school is predominantly female. So yeah. like, I definitely would have seen you. <laughs> and then even like when we first started dating, I was hired to do poetry at his home church before they even knew that we were like, hadn't started dating. And yeah. so I met his pastor and he was like, wait, you guys are, you're in a relation. The poet who was like just on stage, he was like, had, he was like, did we know this before we hired you? <laughs> so it was like all these like crazy, which is why I think the, the term orchestration is like so intentional yeah. because it's like, there's so many moving pieces that are happening and we aren't even fully aware of how they're unfolding. And so it was cool to be like, what? You were there? Like, I was there. What? You were there? I was I there. And so, yeah. So we, but, and, and Instagram created the yes. integration, which is so funny because I was like, I don't want to use an app. I don't want, I want my story to be authentic. I want to sit in a coffee shop and then I look at the window <laughs> and there he is because I'm a four on the Enneagram. You are such a four on the Enneagram. <laughs> like I could feel it. I mean, one, I knew because I, you know, saw on Instagram, but then yeah. like literally just as we're talking now, that's why when you, you were mid-sentence and I like leaned forward to touch you because I just, I'm just like drawn, like you're so oh, calming and you. like forced. Y'all just, and everything you're saying, you're like, you get engaged, but it's like, it's a, it's, it's both sides. It's yeah. like this really crazy process. It's really yeah. good, but it's also painful in a sense that because you're, you know, you're moving into a new season mm -hmm. and like yeah. you, you're able to see both sides totally. and feel both sides. I feel, oh, very tangibly feel <laughs> yeah. both sides. Yeah. And that's why I like, I like fours and I like, like more people who are more empathic mm. because like I feel a lot but I don't know how to process them so people like you I'm like oh, help me <laughs> like tell how me do I, what's in my head <laughs> yeah. What's yeah yeah, yeah. No, oh my god well, can, I love that story and Thank I think you. that is super unique like mm. and then seeing and then being able to go back and see all the different ways yeah. that like that is it is it is you know it's so I my mentor in college I remember like crying to her about like a heartbreak that probably didn't really make any type of difference but at the moment it made a difference oh, yeah. And she was just like, I have like played these words over and over in my head all the time. She was like, you are deserving of a handcrafted love story. And like something that specific meant so much to not only like an empath, like feeler of a four, but also a words person mm -hmm. where it's like, I don't want something to just kind of be thrown together. Mm -hmm. Like I want the orchestration of it to be so intentional and so divine to the point where it almost doesn't make sense um, because it can only come from that place. And so with him, I'm like, I met him and I was just like, shoot, you are almost everything just visually that I've ever imagined and then I kept interacting with him and kept getting to know him and I was like you're this unfolding of like yeah my desires but also what God has for me yeah and when you integrate the two it's super it's super sweet it's super sweet and really cool and hard obviously right but also really beautiful at the same yeah. time have you listened to Mia Fields ever do you know who she no. is she had this vision that she was in a warehouse of furniture uh, and God was showing her around and he was like um you know, she was like, can I have this one? And God said, sure. And he was like, you can have anything you want in here. And she was like, well, but what do you want for me? Mm -hmm. And he said, what I want for you is going to take time. Like I can give you what I want for you, but it's going to take time. It's not going to happen. It's not one of these pieces. It's going to be handcrafted for you. And what he said, tailor made for you mm -hmm. was what she used. Wow. And I'm like, you know, I was weeping. I played yeah. it my Bible study. They're all weeping. Like we're all like, oh, wait, say. so, but yeah. it, it really, it's, so true and I think yeah. if you hold out for that like yeah. and you believe that you know you don't have to settle on any level mm -hmm. you know whether it's uh, I don't know yeah for me like it's the hardest thing has been finding somebody who like is spiritually on the same page with mm -hmm. me um and not that I'm like this spiritual guru mm -hmm. like I'm out there and I'm not like this clear cutter Christian okay yeah but it's like you know it's just knowing that you don't have to settle for yeah. anything less than what God has for you and yeah. waiting for that. And that's so cool. Like, yeah, I love that you said that because it really resonated Thank with you. me on a deep level. Yeah. But yeah. so tell me about the skims campaign for the Kardashian. Kim yeah. Kardashian. How did you get involved with that? Yeah. Um, an email. So it was okay. like, Hey, Ariel, um, I'm a part of the camp. They didn't tell us the name. It was okay. just like a shapewear brand. 
um, created by Kim Kardashian. And I remember like screenshotting the email. I don't even know who I sent it to, but I was like, this is a scam. Like this is for sure, <laughs> it's not a thing. They did not mean to send it to me. Um, it's fine. And so I remember like emailing back and kind of just like creating conversation. I was like, oh no, this is like a real thing. They emailed me on like a Tuesday and then the shoot was literally the next Tuesday. Oh, wow. So I needed to give an answer by like that Thursday or Friday. So I like sent it to, I'm like, I have two different um, modeling agencies. And so I like sent it to one of them and I was like, does this look legitimate? Like, can I loop you in just in so case? So it wasn't even from them. No, it wasn't from, so I'm, I'm non exclusive for most of okay. my agency stuff. So I can book by myself okay. I, and usually they find me through Instagram. Okay. Um, and so it wasn't even through them. So I brought my agency in and was like, I need to bring you in for like legitimacy yeah. and also make sure like I don't get screwed over. Right. <laughs> so like, can you check out like contracts and like all those details? <laughs> and so they're like, no, this looks like a real like opportunity. How cool. So I was like, what in the world? So get there call time um is like one o'clock and there's like a ton of girls there yeah. different like models and influencers and all these different things and so i wait for like maybe like an hour or two before i even get in the chair they like do my hair and makeup we do some like behind the scenes stuff or some instagram like um like igtv or like just yeah. story stuff and then I sit there for like a few hours and then I don't get cold in until like six oh o'clock. Oh my gosh, it's been a long day. I'm like Fine. sitting on my skin so they're super comfy for the record because I literally sat in them all day long. So I like get in the room and I'm like watching the other girl go and I was like, oh, this is a video. Like, oh, cool, 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 cool. So I just thought we were going in, we'd take our pictures and then, peace out. And then that's it. Yeah. So it's like videos and then Polaroids so was like how the room was like set up. So I was like, all right. Dope. So I'm like there, they look at my skin. She's like, the director's like, too many girls have, have worn this. So they like change my shapewear real quick. And then I try to get my big feet in these tiny little European shoes. And so I'm like trying to be really conspicuous and like trying to put these tiny shoes on, but they're not fitting. So I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> so I'm like trying to pay attention to what's going on. And then eventually I was like, I get them on and I was like, maybe if I just sit still and I don't move, I'll be fine. So then they call me up. And I try to get up and I'm like walking so slowly in their direction and they're like, are you okay? And I was like, <laughs> they're like, you're good. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, why don't we just take them off? So I take them off. I'm like sitting in the middle of like a setup similar to this, like on the ground trying to like put these baby European shoes on huh. my feet. Yeah. And they're like, um, Ariel, right? And I was like, yeah. They're like, oh, is this the poet? Is this the poet? Oh, right? is it? I was like, oh no, oh, what is happening? And then like every staff and like production person like circles, they're just like standing there. She was like, when we record, can you like do something oh for my us? Gosh. And I was like, I don't know what that means to do. I'm like, my poems are like three minutes long. I'm not about to say a whole poem for you right now. So they asked me the questions and then eventually they asked me to like do a poem and I just do like a snippet of my poem, which is on iTunes called This Is For You. And I was like, cool. So you do it, you literally walk out, they pay you and you're like, all right, well now we just wait. And so when they first put it out, the name needed to be revamped just for like some ethical social awareness issues. This is for you? Was no. So the first camp, the first name for skims was actually kimono. Okay. And then they got too much backlash from it, withdrew it. And they were like, Hey, you're still a part of it. We just have to rebrand. So like, wait. So I was just waiting, 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 and then eventually it starts coming back. And then I don't get any content until the night before. They that it dropped. That it dropped. So the night before they're like, hey Ariel, your video's going live tomorrow. We're sending your assets later today. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. I don't even know what the assets look like. Oh gosh, you're like, how do I like so, it? That's great. And then I'm like, hope, hope it goes well. And so they send it to me and I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. Like the Polaroids look great. It looked awesome. And then the next day, I just waited for them to post it and then for it to go live. And I actually, I think my boyfriend texted me, my fiance texted me first. This is so fiance. Weird. I know, I'm like, <laughs> what's this? Fiance. <laughs> like, man, <laughs> person. Um, and he was like, video looks great, super proud of you. And I was like, what video? I didn't send in the video. And so I was like, okay, it's live. And I did not expect this. It was just like in, it was insane. Yeah. Just, I had to withdraw a lot because I've become more 
introverted, the more <laughs> I'm on stage. Yeah. Um, and the more I like expose myself super vulnerably to people that I sometimes will never meet. And so I definitely withdraw a whole lot more. So moments like that, I like post, try to respond it, and I just put my phone down and I was with my family. So I tried to just like be with them, but yeah. it was just like all the, the responses and, and the text. And then I didn't know that Kim was posting some of them oh, on her own yeah. feed. So then she's tagging me and things and I was just like, this is too much. I have like this screenshot of me like ugly crying with my best friend. And I'm just like, what is happening? <laughs> like, what is this? And so it was so cool. Like I am not a Kardashian person. Like I've never watched the show. Yeah. I don't like follow any of them on Instagram. And so I've been, I'm also a four. So I'm very removed from like hypes yeah um and so i was really but at the end of the day i like really respected how she was yeah um using her platform and what she was using it for and so i was like this is a super dope thing to be a part of women who are making impact regardless of how you do or don't feel about them yeah. they have a platform and they make an impact and so um it was so gnarly it like created obviously a, a lot of different opportunities yeah a lot of different conversations it's the reason i'm verified on instagram Instagram. What up? So that's super dope. It's so dope. I woke up and I was like, who has a blue check mark next to their name? Because I run a few other Instagrams too. So I looked at the drop and I was like, oh, oh that's me. Oh, my name. Cool. 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 Did you even request it or they just verified you? I had requested it months ago. Okay. And then, they were and like, then yeah. I was like, it was like, nope, nope. And I was like, I think a few months before that, I was like, let me just try. Yeah. Had heard nothing. And I was like, Dope. I get it. I'm no one, you know, or whatever that means. But then I didn't know there was other articles being put out. Yeah. Um, that created the Google analytics, which is what then allows Instagram to like verify you. So that was like super crazy. Um, so yeah, it was Ugh. gnarly. It was crazy. Unreal. It was dude. crazy. That it is was just, super fun. That's so cool. So much is like happening right now. You're oh, like, it, this, the past six <laughs> months, I feel like at the end, it always just like shifts. Yeah. Like last year, was like right when I had met my then boyfriend and like, it was just like professional opportunity after professional opportunity and then meeting him. And I was like where I wrote my poem called Glorious where it was just like all these opportunities were happening. Mm -hmm. And I was having a really hard time admitting that they were for me mm -hmm. um, or part of my story. Um, Why? Why do you think that is? Um, it comes a lot from just like the Enneagram aspect, but then also growing up um with a mindset of like not necessarily deficit but like these things happen to you um but you don't necessarily associate it as being so intentionally part of your story yeah. or feeling like i didn't deserve those opportunities mm -hmm. like who am i to deserve what's happening to me or this growth or this love or you know insert whatever it is and so having a hard time being like no this is not on accident yeah. this is not happenstance like this is intentionally um like I, you know we were talking about earlier orchestrated yeah. like for my story um and for me to experience and so navigating through that like letting go of like this is for me this is it was on accident you know and navigating through these like glorious opportunities being something that is a part of my story and that i am deserving of yeah how did you get into poetry when yeah. did you start yeah i started with theater actually okay. so i went to an arts high school um from 10th to 12th grade okay. and so it's like half split between from 8 to 12 you do your academics you have lunch from 12 to 1 and then you do your emphasis from 1 30 to 4 30. where was um, this where are you this, from i'm from the bay area okay so it was in oakland so we actually our high school was like in the um the oh my gosh why am i blanking on the name the fox theater the fox theater in, in oakland and so we were like half of it was the theater and then half of it is our school okay and so i went there and i wrote plays i wrote monologues i wrote scripts i wrote little things like that and then um i'd always like felt super connected to it and um i when i went there it was just like this unleashing of like this is who i've always been meant to be you know like other people were weird, so I felt comfortable with being weird and just like embracing this like artsy parts of yes. me um, as like a part of what you do, but also a huge part of like who you are. So that's where my writing kind of stemmed from. I've always journaled. I have journal upon journal upon journal upon journal journal, yes. journal of just words. And so I kind of say that like when it did get time for me to switch from theater to poetry, kind of 
God kind of like took my journal pages and like breathed them out into the world. Um, because I very much, I was like, oh no, 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 I can be vulnerable on behalf of other people's stories. Like I can step into these characters and I can be their vulnerability. I can share their stories. Um, but then stepping into poetry was like stepping into my own vulnerability yeah. and stepping into my own story. And so I kind of did both in college. And then eventually I dropped my theater because I was like, it's not practical. I need to do a real job. Yeah. You know, I need to do the real thing. <laughs> and then right after I dropped poetry, I also was like, I don't want to be on stage because I like grew up super like Baptist. And so it's like always the fear of like, if you do the industry thing, you're yeah. going to end up like Katy Perry, yeah. you know? And so like having that like tangible fear of like, no, I can't. So I don't want the spotlight. I'm not supposed to have the spotlight. So I dropped theater and then literally right after spoken word came to the picture because I had performed a monologue on campus at like one of our coffee shop open mics or whatever. And now my poetry brother, he was like, did you write that? I was like, yeah. He was like, that was spoken word. And I was like, no, it's a monologue. It's like, when <laughs> sorry, you it's, a monologue? it's different. And he was like, no, but the way you like recited it and the way you wrote it even sounded like poetry. So then that turned into two years on a competitive poetry team in college. So you said he was your, he's your poet brother? Is that I call him my poetry brother. Okay. Yeah, we like legit look like siblings, but like he was on campus at that time okay. doing the spoken word and doing things like but that. But this is in college at Azusa. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so you were graduated, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So I was in like, this was like my sophomore, junior year okay. around. And so did two years on a competitive poetry team. One year was male and female, second year was just female. And it was so fun. And then he left and then I took over the poetry club for him after he graduated. And I did that until the end. And then it was like, I would write poems. I was like a resident advisor. So I'd write poems for my girls and things like that. And then other people were like, can you come like share poems to my girls? And then can you come perform during chapel? And then can you, so then it just like spiraled. I was like, I just said, I don't want to be on stage. Yeah. So I don't understand why. Thank God is like, oh, but. Back. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not done. So if you, okay, great. Perfect. And so I was like, cool, cool, cool. So I'm like, babe, I'm supposed to be on stage? Yeah. I don't know. That feels like a weird thing to say. And so then I did that up until graduating. And I remember like applying to grad school and applying to do all these things that were still practical and still made sense and feeling this like immense tugging to like stop applying for stuff, to stop and just sit back. And I had done a, like I'd done like senior speaks chapel and so I had performed to that and I remember getting off stage and I was like okay Lord if you wanted me to do that for the rest of my life I would you know like that simple little like let me put that out there but not enough to like get disappointed yeah. if I don't reach those expectations <laughs> and so I remember like saying that and just kind of putting it out there but then I graduated and nothing else felt right so I was like okay I'll take a year because we like put deadlines and guidelines on dreams because they're scary, right? And I was like, I'll do a year. I'll do this creative thing for a year. I've been doing it, I graduated in 2015, so I've been doing it for almost five years of just this like hustle tornado of a living um, that's like for a purpose so much bigger than my own. Mm -hmm. um, and I could have never experienced that like when I graduated that I would be doing anything connected to Kim Kardashian five years later, you yeah. know? So it's crazy. I know. And every time it's like when you get in these ruts and you feel like you're, you know, you're hustling, you're hustling, you're drowning. Yeah. And it's like, am I even doing anything? Like, is this even worth yeah. it? And then you look back, you know, even yeah. and you're like, wow, okay, that was so meant to be yeah. like, there's so many things in my life moving to LA, um, the friends that I've met and yeah. it's like, but there's been really hard times since I've been here too, yeah. but all of it, like I can look back and I know it has meaning, but still, yeah. I question and I oh, doubt, doubt it. and my faith Every is like, step. yeah, I'm like, okay, today I'm going <laughs> to choose to have faith because I don't believe God I'm having a hard time. Uh -huh. And it's like, but it's, it, this is, it's a constant wrestling because I'm like, why? Yeah. Like God's always come through and he always goes yeah. above more than what we can ask for always. to know as children where we are now, how oh, yeah. crazy and unfathomable, yeah. unfathomable that would have been. Yeah. And it's just so cool. And like, you know, and in five years, it feels like a long time when you're in it, but like that's the amount of success and like the steps and the amount of people that you have impacted, I can't even imagine. That was like somebody, I had like someone in a coffee shop a few months ago or few, like a year or two ago and he like was like, there's like lyrics in your arms. He was like, when I look at you, there's just 
words, like a streamline of like words. He was like, so I don't know what you do with music or something like that. I was like, no, he's getting this wrong. Like, was he I'm like a prophetic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I was like, he's getting this wrong. I'm like a poet. He's not actually, he was like, yeah, well maybe, but I'm seeing song. And I was like, what in the world? And so I remember driving with John and I started just like humming. And I was like, what is happening right now? It was like this moment where you're like, did I just do that? And I was like, okay. And I like keep humming and I keep humming. He's like, what are you singing? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> And then eventually I just like started saying words and I, I record everything on my phone. And so I like pressed it and I just started saying it. And then it realized I connected to the poem that I had written and, um, magic, the poem itself started when I was teaching. I, up until March, I was teaching incarcerated youth and I had them write an I am poem where they said I am statements, but they included ingredients. So like I am one third of this, I am a cup full of this. And so I always write with them to set that example. And so that poem had existed months already, but then that song came. And so now I perform them both together. And um, so that's probably like right now, my favorite piece, yeah. It's so insane like listening to you tell this story because I feel like the pattern is that, you know, you have this desire, passion for something, and then and then God's you're like, nah, nah, like that's actually <laughs> yeah. And then God's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. And then this guy, like literally is like, I see lyrics on your skin, like yeah. all over you, and you're like, nah, nah. I can't even. <laughs> and then you're in your car and you're like, wait, what's happening? I can't stop myself. Mm -hmm. And now you're like and now you're performing those for yeah. people. Would you do a can you say I yeah. would love for you? I feel like I want you to do This Is For You just because okay. we've talked about that so yeah. much and I feel like people watching the episode are going to be like, I mean, I'm sure most people know who you are, but right. wanting to hear you say yeah. it and I would love to have you say that. Yeah, too. of course. So, okay. I'm like, oh, I haven't performed in a second advice. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this, this is for the dreamers who skip rocks on clouds even when people keep telling them to come down. Yes, this. It's for the hopeless romantics who are more than open wounds or open books. They are pop-up shops of love, leaving letters and glass bottles and kissing them to shore. Yes, this, this is for the wild ones. Too haunted by rejection to admit that they are wild. You, you are stampedes of freedom that everyone else is afraid of. You are proof that this world is not in need of any more normal. Yes, this is for the girls searching for beauty in cracked mirrors. There is no wholeness there for the women who are hushed. Do not let them silence the novels streaming from your tongue. Do not let them cage the lioness in your gut. Yes, this is for the women who get told that they are more chaos than human, more storm than functioning. It is okay to choose yourself sometimes. It does not mean that you are selfish. Yes, this is for the pastor's kids who stopped hearing Jesus' voice a long time ago. I dare you search for him in all the places you know how, and I promise he will meet you there. Yes, this is for the pastors who are more condemnation than love. Your pulpit is not your stomping ground. It is where heaven meets earth and sacred meets human. Yes, this, this is for the lonely. I know the way it hurts when your stars kiss this side of earth, but please, darling, get up from your floor. There is no life for you there. Yes, this is for the wallflowers. Baby, it's time to peel your back up off that wall and dance. Do not be afraid of the way that your feet will take you somewhere new. Somewhere new is not always terrifying. Sometimes it is necessary. Yes, this is for the women who are not yet in awe of the way that their being carries life. You are wonder and warrior for the fathers who are not known as half dad and half marathon runner. You, you have held baby in the palm of your hand. You are the definition of stay. Yes, this, this is for the boys who get told to man up. You are man enough for the men searching for the little boys still living inside of them. It is okay to go play in the saying sometimes, yes, this, this is for the teachers who are wondering why their heartbeat for change lessened with their paychecks. I heard a poet say once that sometimes, sometimes they will hand you work boots in exchange for your dreams. You tell them instead, stop giving directions to places you've never been. Teach those kids that there's power in the ink of their pen. Yes, this is for the tutus and the Superman capes that we've buried. For the words that we have not yet let bloom, for the people who are only a smile away from being family, for the people who have not heard our dimple when we tell them I love you and this is for time. The way it ebbs and flows around us, staring us to blink, slipping through our fingers like sand. This is for the way the wave always comes back and the storm always calms. But this one, this right here, this is for you. Your letter in a glass bottle on your shore, open it. I hope you read in big, bold letters. You are enough. 
Yes, this one. <laughs> this is for you. And you are more than you know. That was so beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. I've heard it already before, but I'm like still it's just so powerful. Thank you. Ooh, you have such a gift. Thank um you. Oh my gosh. And I'm just like I feel yeah, honored that you came on this show. Mm -hmm. Um, but your words are just so powerful. The way that you write, it, it just it literally encompasses everybody and it yeah. like makes me when I'm listening to you talk now, like I just feel everything that you're saying mm -hmm. and it's like, and it, yeah, oh, you're so amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you are you. such a gift to this world, Thank like truly. You. So, whew, okay. <laughs> I've never cried on the show before, so that's good. That's, yeah, that happens. <laughs> you're like, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I had to stop apologizing for it, yeah. kind of, because no, I was don't like, I, I think that's like on, on purpose, you know, but I started, I was like feeling bad. I was like, why am I making people? No, it's, I, I was cool to be a part of like whatever healing was happening in that moment, you know? A lot. Um, yeah. A lot. Yeah. I'm going through a lot of healing and learning yeah. how to sit in. Mm -hmm. That's why I love fours because you guys are really excellent at sitting in any emotion. Mm -hmm. And when I have anything that's not positive, I'm like, what? And so yeah. I'm learning how to just sit with whatever it is. Yeah. And, but your words like allowed I feel like your words allow people to do that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, at least, you know. Yeah. So that was. Thank you for doing that. Thanks thank for you. performing. Of course. I just loved having you on, and thank you. this has been such a blessing for me. And mm -hmm. I hope you guys watching this, this was a blessing for you. I'm sure it was. So, but yes. Okay, you guys, make sure to follow Ariel on Instagram. Do, let them know. Plug yeah. it up, baby. This is your cam. All things Ariel Astoria. That's A R I W -L, L N E E S T O R I A dot com. Twitter, SoundCloud. If you're underground like that, iTunes. Underground, Spotify. baby. <laughs> website um pretty much everything is Ariel story yes. yes and then you guys make sure to subscribe to land a late night and click the notifications tab below to know each time a new episode is up i'll be releasing one each week every wednesday night 8 p.m i love you guys thank you for tuning in thank you for being here of course. you guys have a wonderful week and just go binge listen to all <laughs> of her all of her glory thank you bye all bye